I didn't know necessarily they were called cells at the time, probably. But uh, then I looked inside the cell and I saw that it was made out of billions of little shiny dots. And uh, those were atoms and I jumped into one of those and I looked down the middle of the atom and I saw that it was a dot there. And, you know, and then I kept on seeing dots to, and, then, and then I got it. I said, oh, the solution to the problem is that instead of assuming that dimension zero has no uh, dimensionality, that it has no existence, is the exact contrary, is that the only thing that exists is dots. All there is is point particle, like singularities. I didn't know that term at the time, but I, I assume that everything was made out of dots. And you know that the universe like had all these dots and it put the dots together and made all sorts of things, but that the fundamental structure of space was a dot, a singularity, a point of infinite density that could be divided to infinity. Wow, I was excited about that. I just like was flying from like one scale of dot to the other and I could look at the people in the bus and I could see they were made out of dots that were made out of dots that were made out of smaller dots and they were like all shiny and you know, you know when you have like a intuition or a, um, how do you say, a revelation, a revelation thank you. Uh, you get all excited and you want to tell someone and most of the time, you know, you tell the person and, you know, it's not always well received. Well, um, I didn't know who to talk to. I wasn't going to talk to the bus driver or anything. So I ran out of the bus when I got home and got to my place and I waited for my mom to get back from work. And then when my mom finally came home, I was like, Mom, Mom, I've got something figured. I figured out something at school today. And she was like, oh, really? She got really excited because she thought, I did good at school for the first time in my life. And uh, I said, Mom, I said, there was this lesson on dimension. I explained the whole thing. And I said, no, I think, I think that's wrong. I said, I think everything's made out of dots. And you're made out of dots to infinity, Mom. And da 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 da. And she looked at me with that look, you know, the uh, look of despair on an Italian mother. That's like a force that you got to be reckoned with. And. Uh, she said, you know, I don't think that's the answer they're going to want on the exam. And you, you know, you should stick to the curriculum and try not to, you know, do it. And, uh, and, and, and she said, anyway, I said, she said, I just worked for eight hours and I don't feel infinite at all. And, um, and she had made a point. I mean, I kind of realized, wait a minute, I can't be going around telling her people that everything is infinite if you know how how come things are have a finite boundary I mean things are finite mom is finite I, how does this work I can't have finite and infinite what how does this work and uh, so I basically didn't say anything to, any, to anybody else and I started to think about it and really it, was, it became it's a source of inspiration and you know, a uh, research uh, from that moment on. Uh, by the age of 11, I was kind of really realizing that uh, that concept of the dot having infinite density was was interesting, but I had still no way of describing it. However, I was getting very discouraged with the whole world at that point. I was having a hard time with schools. I was discouraged with the world. I was pretty well suicidal and asked my mom like would it bother you much if I jumped out the window <laughs> and um, it was inter uh, it was at that time that a young master of meditation came into my life he was only 14 from East India and I was 11 and I learned to meditate and when I did I realized that there was a whole world that you know I could turn my senses inward and kind of connect to and it was kind of the same concept that, the, that there was a dot in the middle of me that, you know, that was the source of my existence that, had, that I could connect to. And it was really interesting. And then I start to realize then there must be a relationship between what's going in and what's going out. 
And the relationship between what's going in and what's going out creates a boundary that, that I didn't know how to explain it. I didn't realize I was describing fractals. And I didn't realize what it, what it implied in terms of physics. Because, uh, you know, having spiritual and philosophical concepts is all good. But if you don't apply it to advanced physics and mathematics and technology, you, you still have a problem. You still have pollution. You still have all sorts of problems, water raising, <laughs> you know, that you may be able to solve if you apply these higher concepts. And this, this plan is really divided. All the spiritual people saying, we don't need no stinking technology. Usually they tell me down their cell phone driving their car. And, uh, and, you know, and I interact with a lot of physicists. I lecture in universities and stuff. And, you know, the physicist, on the other hand, tells me, oh, we don't need no stinking consciousness. And, you know, and that's really, you know, a problem if you're going to be the conscious person writing the equation, you know. <laughs> If the consciousness is not there, how are you going to write that equation, dude? You know, so um, that, you know, and so like bringing the two together is really a big issue. But I didn't know all these things. Eventually, I realized that through simple mathematical, uh, you know, equations and certainly through simple geometric structure, the dichotomy between infinities and finite system can be resolved. And that is a fundamental problem in current physics, uh, meaning the major issue that we're struggling with in physics at this time is infinities. Uh, infinities creep up in the equations everywhere, and uh, singularity is basically unsolved, so it kind of on, it, it kind of separates quantum physics from relativistic equation and there's this whole problem in unifying all the math and all the physics due to that infinite problem, um, the infinity problem. So jumping ahead because we have a short amount of time, you can see how my seminar takes a long time, you know, I'm, i got to describe infinity to you guys. but. Uh, <laughs> Um, in simple terms right now, I'm going to prove to you that finite systems and infinite systems are actually um, um, together, that they, they work with each other, that actually you can't have finite system without infinities, you can't have infinities without finite system. Boundary structures are necessary to be able to define space so that you can have infinities and uh, and infinities are fundamental to a boundary structure. So uh, I'll show you right here uh, in a simple way that you are absolutely allowed and should think of infinities inside boundaries. Um, now we have a little circle here. Now this circle could be a sphere in 3D, so you know, don't get stuck on the 2D thing. <laughs> but it could be a sphere. And uh, the triangle in the middle is an equilateral lateral triangle, and it could be a tetrahedron in 3D, so it could be a tetrahedron inside a sphere. Now since everything in the universe has spin angular momentum, Everything in the universe is polarized. It has a pos positive, negative, it has a north and south pole. And so since things are polarized, you can add another uh, reverse triangle to that triangle. Interestingly, right away you get one of the most ancient symbol you find all around the world in most of the cultures. Um, and that, pro you know, that is um, part of the conversation I'm going to have on Sunday about ancient civilization that I won't have time to do tonight. Um, so this can be continued, that is, you can continue to add triangles. And if you add triangles, you get the same geometry again, but in a smaller scale. So we call that in uh, fractal lingo, 
uh, resolution scale, right? So different resolution. So now you can continue to add further triangles, and now you get the same geometry again, again at a different scale or at a different resolution. And every time you add a new resolution, you're defining a new boundary. Now you see? So now you have smaller boundaries and smaller boundaries again. You can continue to divide, to divide the space. Now, it's only in that one. I didn't do it all around, you know, got lazy. But, uh, you know, you can do that again and again. See, it's dividing right now, but you can't see it. And it's making boundaries. And now I could give that program to my computer and run it and get the computer to zoom in every five resolution, for instance, and then keep making triangles and zoom in and keep making triangles and zoom in. And, and it would continue to do that to infinity, meaning, well, as long as it's got power and, you know, the chips are running, um, it would continue to divide space. However, there is never a time that I would 